Hello and welcome to Kimba Bushcraft. Yeah, today I'm in my backyard presenting my new DIY video where I make this shield, this Viking shield. Um, I actually plan to go up to Uxengard, the Viking village in the northern part of Denmark and making a video about uh, Viking weapon and armory and including this uh, DIY video. But uh, unfortunately the, the Viking village is closed this week so I'm only going to make a video about how I made this shield and then uh, perhaps next week I'll go up there and make a video about uh, the armory and the weaponry that the Vikings could have. Uh, I actually got some new stuff among that assort from uh, Grimfrost. Uh, I would like to present to you and talk about uh, different kinds of uh, weapon that the Viking used. But now that you can see I'm finished with my Viking shields and I'm very pleased with it. I think it's cool. I wanted a, a simple design. I could have made all kind of ornaments on this, but I like these colors. Uh, and as I say in the video, uh, these are old colors that are used in the uh, uh, old days, uh, Elmu color. And uh, yeah, I think it looked nice in this shield. So. I hope you enjoy this little DIY with you. And I bought four of these planks of boards. It's Douglas uh, fur and the length is uh, 3 meters and 5 centimeters. And uh, the width of it is 9 centimeters and the thickness uh, 1.8 centimeters. So, and doing this, I have, and this uh, I cut it up in, uh, in sections and I have. Uh, a quarter of a shield and one more here, quarter of a shield uh, and I lay the two together uh, like a sandwich uh, you'll see that when I come to that point but this uh, wood I chose for this little project is because it's lightweight and uh, yeah it's not very thick here and that means a lot to me when I'm going to uh, do the rest of the process. I'll show you that. Here you can see the measurements and the section I cut up uh, from uh, one plank uh, that is uh, 305 centimeters. So cut it up in these pieces and uh, you'll have a quarter of a shield. The next one will be here and uh, then yeah you can see it in the video. Yeah and then I have this working table uh, foldable I can put up here in the living room and I attach a uh, such one with some clamps and also over here and I'll tell you why in a bit. Uh, then I'll take these that I have cut out and place them here. And you can see I have a marking where the middle is. Right here. This is fine. So now you can see it's laid out here and uh, this is the middle so I have to draw a circle here to make the shield. Uh, but uh, this one, because I have to glue it together with some uh, uh, glue, glue that is for wood and it has to be under pressure for about five minutes. Uh, this one is to hold it tight and I take this one, I turn it around so I can use it to press that way instead of that way. So then I just have to do this and then these boards will be uh, pressed together when the glue has come on. So um, yeah, this is my idea and uh, I'm going to make two of these of course.
course I put a lot of glue on so I'm sure that it will attach both sides but it doesn't matter if there's any uh, glue that's sticking out because I'm going to I'm going to um, make it thinner I'll show you later and uh, then the final one Yeah, and then I take this one, press it together, yeah, and uh, to be sure, I'm going to add a little bit the places that I can see the glue hasn't popped up, but I don't think this is necessary because I'm going to make a sandwich. You see that later in the process. Yeah, I think that's okay. And Cornelius is following me on this project too. Here in my living room. Isn't that right, Cornelius? Yeah. You were interested in this little project too. I'm going to make a, a shield, yeah. I think I'll put this one over so that I'm sure it's not going to be an even surface. I'm going to press it down here also. Yep. And then I just have to let it dry. They say 24 hours, then it's completely uh, attached and dry. Yeah, and now I made two identical uh, pieces here. And my idea is uh, that I will turn them around so you can see here, so that they are crossed. I think that will make a very strong uh, shield and uh, uh, will last for a long time. Of course, it's very thick, but I'll uh, uh, fix that with a with a planner, so that I'll make the shields uh, round uh, with a saw, and then a planner. I will uh, make it thinner, uh, thick here, and thinner out in the in the edges. So that's my plan. Now I'm going to uh, drill a hole here in the middle on both uh, both sides and uh, you'll see why so I can attach them uh, with some glue and uh, yeah. yeah so in the next step I'll take this one put it down here and then I'll take the other part and put it over here then I'm sure it's in the middle on both sides. Uh, yeah, and it fits nicely. I think I'll, of course, put some glue between these two and then a lot of these clamps hold it together. So now a nice thick of a nice thick layer of glue. I hope that will 
make them glue together. Yeah. Then put this one over like this. There you are. Yeah. Then I have this one. Heavy weights, 15 kilos. And then I just have to uh, take, take the clamps on. Yeah, and so on. Now it's done, and uh, you can see I attach a lot of clamps all the way around. And in the middle here, a heavy uh, 15 kilos iron plate uh, on a little chair, a stool. Uh, so, yeah, now I have to wait. Uh, I think I'll let it be like this for several hours and then. I hopefully will uh, can take this one off and it will stay there. We'll see. Yeah, so <clears throat> now it is dried, the glue, and uh, hopefully the two parts have been uh, dried firmly together. So, yeah. So now the next step is to make my rounded circle here. For the, yeah, now I drill two holes in this little stick, one there and one there. And uh, I'll put this one on, and then I can take my pencil and just draw the outlines of my, my shield. In an even circle. Just like this. And then I, of course, I have to cut it out. Yeah, but before I do that, I'll also make an uh, inner circle for this. This is, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a guard for the hands, for the shield. And I bought it from Grimfrost many months ago. And there's even some very cool nails to it, hand forged, that will look very nice on this shield. But um, this shield is a hand guard that I need when I'm holding my shield. So I have to find the middle and find how big this part is. And then make a circle again. So I can see that the hole is about 14 centimeters. And that means that the radius will be seven. So then I just have to find this one again and make approximately seven centimeters out from this point. And you can hear Cornelius is barking because he thinks there's something out in the garden, but there's not. So I said 14 and uh, that's seven. I make it a little approximately there. And then I drill a hole there, I can put this one down in. Yeah, and then I just do another circle here. Well, hopefully it will be 14 centimeters in diameter. Let's check it. That's nice. So this guard can be here and I can hold my hand inside it. It's going to look nice, I think. So now I have to cut it out. Yeah, now I cut it out. You can see it's round now. And with this one in the middle, that this one will go over. 
Yeah, for those of you who doesn't know the principle of this little guard, hand guard. Here I have a, I will have a stick. I can hold my, uh, hold the shield, and then this will protect my hand if anyone hits the shield. So it's a hand guard, and um, yeah. On the back side, I'll have a couple of, I'll have one uh, that I can, that is going from this direction to there, and uh, I can hold my hand, and there will be a flat one here and here to stabilize it. I don't think that's necessary because the way I've done it, I crossed it so it's very strong but it's also very thick, you can see. Uh, and I have to use a planner uh, to grind it down uh, to approximately half the size of this. Um, this is approximately four centimeters and I want it to be about one and a half to two centimeters. So that will be the next step. And then I have to finish the edges and so on, but yeah. This is how it looks at the moment, and uh, I'm looking very much forward to finish it. Yeah, now it's finished. Uh, then uh, it's about one and a half centimeter. So a lot of wood I had to uh, remove the, from this shield and it's because it's almost like plywood. I have glued it together in a cross, so I think it will be very strong. And um, yeah, and it's also reasonably light, so I can carry it without any trouble. And now for the next steps, I have to um, I have to make something in here so I can hold my hand and some other things that can stabilize it, so that it won't. Uh, wobble or something. So that's the next step. Uh, I have to find some wood that is suitable for that. This side is the back side. I haven't uh, grinded as much at the front. The front is going to be paint, but this one I think is going to be uh, burnt. I like the, the look of burnt wood. So yeah. But uh, until now I'm very pleased with it. I think it's going to be a, a very cool little uh, shield. Now I made these three sticks. You can see here, one that looks like this, yeah, and two like this. And the plan is to put it on here, like this, and um, first I'll glue it on. This is the holder, yeah, you can see that. First I'll glue it on and uh, put some pressure on it and let it um, harden up for a day. Then I'll put some nails in some of the uh, things here and uh, perhaps some screws and this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but this is the way it's going to be uh, on the back side of this shield. Yeah, you can see here, like this fits in like in this one, like that, and uh, around this so it's nice to hold on. So now I have to glue it on. Yeah, now glue it on and put some, um, some screws in for holding it secure. So you can see here, then I just have to mount this, yeah. And of course, uh, paint uh, the front side of the of the shield. I'm not quite sure what paint it's going to be. And on this side, I have to. I want to burn it so it looks old, and put some um, some oil on. So that will be my next step to burn this, and then um, put some oil on, and then I have to decide how I'm going to decorate this. I have a cross in here that I will make. Uh, I'm thinking about making it black and then these in different colors or this in blue and this in red. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, what I'm going to do, but yeah, I think it looks good and uh, have a good grip.
So, I'm very pleased with it. And before I put the linseed oil on, I want to sand it a little bit, so it's going to be a little bit smoother. Not so hard a burning. I think that looks uh, more old. And um, I decided not to use um, linseed oil because it makes it darker so I want to make it I want to use some um, mineral oil for stones granite and so on it makes uh, it not so uh, dark and makes a, a little bit uh, hard surface I use this for a lot of things um, so I can recommend you to buy some oil that is uh, used for uh, stones if you have a granite table and so on, you can use this to, so, yeah, but I'll just have to apply this and then you'll see the final result in just a second. Yeah. Now it's been burnt and uh, put some oil on, and you can see, I think it's a nice surface, don't you Cornelius? Yeah. And so now it's the, the, the front, I have to paint that, starting with the cross here. And uh, yeah, you'll see how it turns out. finish with the cross then let, let it dry and then to the next step Now I've painted it, uh, I must say, in the camera it looks a little bit different in color than it is in the real life. Uh, this red is not as red as here, and the blue is a little bit more blue, but I hope when I'm getting out you can see. Uh, it's some nice colors, I like them. Uh, they are not uh, particularly bright, and they are old school, uh, in Denmark we call it Elmu. Uh, means uh, uh, old colors, uh, something that uh, they used in the old days. It's earth color. But uh, the next step will be to put this on in a special way. Hope uh, it will work and uh, you'll see how I'm going to do that. I must say, uh, these colors, uh, you can see here what kind of uh, paint I've used. Uh, it's called uh, char colors. Uh, I don't know if you can get them in your country, but uh, perhaps something similar. So, yeah, I put these on, I think they are called rivets. And um, 
these nails were uh, together with this uh, hand guard, but instead of using them here, I decided to put them in here so that they will stabilize the the hand guard here, uh, the, the handle. Yeah, now I put the hand guard on and uh, these nails. I think they look cool, very rough. And uh, I almost finished now. I just have to do one last thing, and it's not a easy task. I have never tried that before. I bought this. You can see here, it's rawhide, specially made for uh, for this sheet, and it's from uh, France, a company called uh, Black Armor, and uh, it's going to be around the shield and bent and then nailed to it. So uh, this is the next project. I have to uh, put them in water first so that they'll be soft, so I can mold it around the shield and then uh, put some small nails in and then yeah, then I'm finished but uh, I'm a little bit excited to make this because I never tried before I have a little plan so yeah and now I have soaked the rawhide for <laughs> for over the night and you can see Cornelius is very interested in this because it's the same as in dog bones so dog chewing bones so he's very interested in, uh, in this, but now it's flexible, you can see, I can bend it and then I just have to uh, dry so the excess water is off and it's still soft and then I can apply it to the shield and look at this, I made a I made a, a marking here on the middle so I can, uh, when I put it on, I can see it's sitting uh, in the middle of the shield so that the sides will be equal in length and this is uh, something, perhaps I can take it off with uh, alcohol afterwards and if I can't, it doesn't matter, uh, it looks okay. But now the rawhide is uh, finished and I can put it on the shields. Oh yeah, Cornelius, it is very interesting. Probably very delicious for you. Yeah, so now it's fine. I can start uh, putting it on. Yeah, and I put a little bit of rope on here on the edges. Uh, so, uh, well, um, and it's first time I'm doing this, so bear over me. I have to find out how exactly I'm going to do this. I think I'll do this first. Punch the rawhide and put the nail in. And see if it can stand there. this and I guess an inch or so will be proper between the nails yeah and the other side Then I just have to continue.
think I'm finished. You can see here on both sides uh, the rawhide. I put on some uh, some nails, two kind of nails, some black and some with brass. And I think I'll uh, make these brass a little more, a little less shiny. So I have to treat them with something, perhaps vinegar. Uh, it's a little bit exciting because I know the rawhide is very powerful when it shrinks, when it puts it, itself together. So if uh, the nails are not long enough, you can risk that it will uh, tear it up. And I'm not sure that my nails are long enough. So I have to wait a couple of days until this is um, dry completely uh, and see how it goes. But I cross my fingers that this will do it. Yeah. I had to remove the, the rope I put in because otherwise this uh, um, rawhide wouldn't be wide enough, long enough, so it could uh, go down on the shield. So um, my plan of putting a rope in here is good, but uh, this rawhide is not uh, big enough for that, so I, um, I didn't do that. Yeah. I hope you find it interesting, uh, my little video about how uh, you can make a Viking shield yourself. As you saw, I tried to make it uh, very uh, robust by uh, making my own plywood uh, crossing the boards so that it would be more strong. Yeah. yeah. So this is all for now, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little video and found it interesting and perhaps uh, could be uh, inspired to make your own Viking shields. So, yeah. Then I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye bye. Take care.